So we started with the idea that people have preferences over different combinations of good. We added three assumptions, non-satiation, that they like more of more is better in general. Uh, completeness, that they always have a way to compare two options, even if their decision is that they're indifferent. And third, transitivity, so that if you like one thing over another, and you like that other thing over a third thing, you like the first thing over the third thing as well. And just taking those three assumptions, we were able to build uh, this kind of diagram, uh, where we have on the vertical axis, the amount of shelter we're consuming or any other good, and on the horizontal, the amount of food, or again, any other good that you want to consider. Then these lines represent indifference curves, where any point, any bundle of things on the curve, the uh, consumer is indifferent between those two. And we also said that by the non-satiation principle, we know that as you move in this direction, this is most preferred because we like having more. And so if we're moving in the direction of having more shelter and more food, the things that are on those lines are going to be more preferred. Now, can we go any further? Well, you look at this and it actually looks a lot like those isoquants that we drew for production technology. And in fact, economists are really lazy and we're going to take all of the mathematical machinery that we used for production technologies and we're just going to relabel all the variables basically and come up with a new function called a utility function instead of a production function. So, so a utility function looks something like this. You've got some utility as the output and then it's a function uh, we'll do a little U with a bar over it, of the different goods that a consumer can, can, can have, like shelter and food or any other things that people like having that are good, okay, that they prefer, that they desire. And you can solve this uh, function, and if you set U equal, to the, the U equal to some fixed number, you can generate these kind of lines. And what we do here is basically we say each, each one of these indifference curves is associated with a different utility. So like 10, 20, 30, and we say sort of more utility equals more preferred. And this utility function is just a it's just a shortcut for how we represent preferences. Underneath it all is this giant set of two by, you know, one by one of, of pairs of preferences. Do you like A or B? Do you like D or C? Do you like X or Y? But instead of carrying around like a giant table of preferences and working with that, we condense it all into a little function, okay, that describes for any combination of goods converted into some number, which we call utility, and then whichever number, if that number is higher than another number, then that means it's more preferred. And this is just a shortcut, it's useful, uh, it's easy to work with, because now we can do a lot of the same tricks that we did with production functions, but it's not necessarily supposed to capture anything real, okay? So like the production function captures something you can really measure. If you have a number of inputs, we can measure how much labor you have, how much capital you have, and then we can measure how much output you have. So we have three actual observable quantities. The utility function takes uh, inputs. Instead of inputs, it uses these goods, things that people consume. But the output is not anything that we can measure, this utility. Okay. All we really observe is what people choose, and we kind of choose a function that is consistent with uh, their choices. Okay. And in fact, this is one important reason, uh, in fact, utility functions, like the actual number, doesn't actually mean anything. All that it means, all, all that's important is, it's, if, is whether it's greater or less than another thing. But if it's like 10 utility or 30 utility, there's nothing we can measure in the real world. All that matters is if 30 utility is greater than 10 or not. And in fact, we could just divide the entire utility function where is it down here? Okay, by say 100, and all of the utilities would be one one hundredth of what they were before, but since the order wouldn't change, 
this would be just as valid a utility function representing the exact same preferences as uh, before. So in that sense, utility is what we say uh, ordinal, so the order matters, but not cardinal, like having twice as much utility as another option doesn't actually mean anything because we could just you know, square it and then it would be four times as much or we could take the square root. All that matters is the order, not the actual magnitude. Now, that all said, it is still true that things that we most prefer are going to get associated with a high utility number. Okay, so if something gives you utility of a million and most everything else has a utility of like one or two, then like that means you most prefer the thing that has the utility of a million. It doesn't mean you are like a million times as happy, but it means it's most preferred. And so loosely speaking, it's like fine, I think, to think of utility as measuring how much happiness or how much pleasure you obtain from getting this. So you can think of utility as measuring uh, your pleasure from a certain pile of goods, but always bear in the back of your mind that that's just sort of a convenient way to remember what we're measuring here. It's not technically correct. What's technically correct is that high levels of utility mean that this bundle is preferred to many other bundles because most other bundles will have a low number if this one is unusually high.